Hi, everybody. Hello there. Jerry. And Linda. And Gizmo. We're the village's newcomers. Send us your questions. We've got your answers. Jerry and Linda's Mailbag Monday. Wow, that was awesome. That's pretty cool. <laughs> That's our first submission for the theme song to Mailbag Monday. And a big thank you to Wally Sagita for sending that in. Very talented guy. Oh, I love that. That was nice. We like to start off with a shout out. This one is to Ron Pass up in Ohio. Ron, thank you for the Buckeye hat. Appreciate that. <laughs> it hurts a little, I'm not gonna lie. But it's a neat cap and I really appreciate you thinking about me. Thanks so much, Ron. Cheryl McCormick sent us an email and we wanted to share it with you. It's kind of telling about the villages, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It is. It's one of the worst parts about the villages. Mm -hmm. And her letter says, just moved here from Orlando two weeks ago. My mother would have referred to the villages as finishing school. That play on words has certainly rung true for us. We've witnessed firsthand another facet of Village's life. The first day that Cheryl was here, she met a nice neighbor on the right side of her house. And the next day, she went over and met the coroner there as they took away the husband of that neighbor. Mm -hmm. This morning, she says, the neighbor on the left, the coroner once again. They're now on a first name basis. Mm -hmm. And she said, there goes another siren. Keep the videos coming. Well, you know. That's very sad. I'm wondering which part of the villages Cheryl lives in. Mm -hmm. You know, that would tend to make me think it was probably up in the northern part where people settled here years ago and right. at retirement age and now they're passing. Mm -hmm. But it can happen anywhere and uh, everybody hates to lose a neighbor. We've been pretty lucky in our area. I think so. I I was telling Jerry today, I said, I've not heard of an ambulance in our neighborhood in two years we've been here. Uh, maybe they just don't use the sirens or what? I don't know, but I've not experienced any of that yet. Well, we lost a, a nice neighbor, although we weren't close with him, to a bicycle mm -hmm. accident a while back. But yeah. uh, Cheryl, thank you for the letter. That is certainly something to think about. This is from... Um, Jody, and she says, can you share some of the other communities you considered before uh, selecting the villages? A lot of you know our story. Um, we started looking for a vacation home, right. an occasional home in Destin, Fort Walton Beach, mm -hmm. uh, Pensacola, in those areas. Mm -hmm. And we were basically scared off by the threat of hurricanes. Mm -hmm. So we decided to look inland. And, and we even looked in other states as well. We looked at a couple of Del Webb communities. Uh, yeah. And although they're very nice, nothing really spoke out to us. Uh, we visited uh, Stone Creek, which is a, uh, a community up near Ocala. Mm -hmm. Very nice. We have been to On Top of the World. Uh, but we haven't found anything that compares for us to the villages. Mm -hmm. Peter says, what's the real deal with golf in the villages? Are the executive courses really free? Peter, they are free. They're 100% free. If you're a resident here, you check in with your resident ID card and you're good to go. Now that means you're good to go if you want to walk. If you want to ride, you can pay $4 trail fee, or you can buy an annual trail fee. It's $141 for your entire household. And uh, that's what we do. Mm -hmm. But the executive golf is free. And he wants to know the cost of championship courses in April and the ease of getting a tee time. April is the high season. You're going to pay the maximum amount uh, if you're a resident. You can buy a priority membership, and that amount goes down a bit. You can play here as a guest, and that amount will go up a bit. But uh, I would say somewhere between $40 and $50 would be accurate, maybe a little more on some of the uh, courses. The ease of getting a tea time, it's pretty, 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 pretty difficult. Yeah, true. As Larry David would say. Um, 
during the, this time this time of the year the snowbird season is t difficult to get a tea time seasonal residents seasonal our friends yeah we like the snowbirds <laughs> uh, they're here yesterday i tried to get a tea time for tuesday now right today is sunday mm -hmm. we're taping this on a sunday tried to get a tea time on saturday for a tuesday i could find absolutely zero openings for a foursome on tuesday Every single tea time was booked until so late in the day that it's questionable whether you could get in a, a, a nine hole round or not. So yeah, it, during, uh, I'll say January through the end of April, it's tough. Roger asks, is there a directory of residents down there that I, they can research? Uh, I'm not on Facebook. So how does he figure it all out? This. There is a residential directory. Can you see that? And it's given free to people that live here. I don't know how you'd go about getting one, Roger, but it's there and uh, everybody's listed. I think you can opt out of it. So if you want to be, uh, you know, if you're in witness protection or whatever, you can opt out of that. But uh, yeah, there is a resident directory. Roger also says to give Gizmo a hug. <laughs> this from Roger, Gizmo. Yeah. Randy and Tina ask, uh, they are a military family, and they ask if there is a military discount. And I think there are discounts in many of the uh, stores here, probably a 10%. Right. And people think that I'm military. I'm not. My sons, all three. Our sons. Our sons. Our sons. <laughs> all three are military. And uh, unfortunately, that doesn't qualify us for the discount. I'm turning that camera just a little bit. Doesn't qualify us for the discount. It should, though, shouldn't it? Should. We put our time in. <laughs> for <of> worry. <laughs> okay. When your child is in uh, Afghanistan or Iraq, it's pretty worrisome. Randy and Tina also asked, do we have some favorite restaurants? We do. My favorites are Oakwood Smokehouse. Mm -hmm. Barbecued ribs, I love them. Napolino's Italian. I know that's one of your favorites. That is. A Pisano's Pizza. Wonderful place. And that's close. We can drive our golf right. cart. A Metro Diner is a great place for wholesome food. You know, the pot pies, the fried chicken. It's good. Square One Burgers. Um, Delicious. They're good. Oh, we like. I like them. And they have these awesome towers of onion rings. They're really good. Um, Artman's Barbecue is another barbecue place, which is fantastic. A little farther away, it's up on Highway mm -hmm. 42, mm -hmm. a little farther. But there's a, a, a little gem close to us that Linda hasn't been to yet. I, I sneaked away one day and had barbecue there. It's called Our Barbecue. It's Ooh. over on uh, 441, but not too far away. Very, very good. Mm -hmm. Randy and Tina also ask about our favorite ice cream place. Well, there are a couple. We like Mystic Ice Cream the best it has tons of flavors and some of those flavors are actually adult flavors you can get spiked ice cream well, we don't partake but people like it um, also there's a scoople's ice cream store down in town which is it's nice um, also our favorite furniture store do we have one I don't no. not here mm -mm. Uh, we've been to the mall we've bought from city furniture we bought a really nice uh, entertainment center from city furniture we bought our dining table from Babette's, and uh, we, we did some got fun. a really nice, what do you call it, the, in the dining room, the thing. Oh, uh, a buffet. A uh, buffet <laughs> from uh, Wayfair. Yeah. That, well, it, that is my suggestion, Wayfair. Wayfair's a good place. It's right or they'll make it right. Yeah, and, they will. Uh, mm -hmm. so, but we had, we had really good furniture stores back home, yeah. Haverty's. Yes. And there may be maybe Haverty's in Ocala or maybe Orlando. Really good quality furniture there. We we had a local company, shout out to Schmidt Furniture back in Indiana, mm -hmm. uh, a good place. And we trusted them with good quality furniture. But down here, I don't, I don't know. I haven't, uh, haven't found any place we really love. Uh, our favorite grocery store? Well, everybody knows it's our Walmart marketplace right around the corner. And they do, they. I don't know if they deliver, but we definitely do the pickup, and we love that feature. So, and we like Aldi's. The Walmart marketplace is good. It's clean. Uh, you know, it's, it doesn't have your typical Walmart vibe that uh, you know <laughs> that you see on the internet sometimes. It's it's a very good place to shop. 
Aldi's uh, has good prices if you don't mind not getting a name brand sometimes. Yeah. Uh, so those are the places we primarily shop. Karen and James ask us about uh, secondhand stores for furniture. And we've seen a couple places we like. The Furniture Barn, we got a really lovely couch that was from an estate sale, I believe, and it was brand new. We unwrapped it plastic and all, so it was really beautiful. Uh, Almost Perfect is a huge store with about three big pole barns of furniture. Tons of inventory. And like Cheryl alluded to in the, the opening of our show, there are estate sales every once in a while mm -hmm. where you can pick up some high quality furniture at a discount price. Mm -hmm. uh, sad but true. Richard and Judy ask, are there any gun clubs or shooting ranges in the area? I'm former law enforcement here in Colorado and like to keep my skills current. Yes, there are. There is a state-of-the-art uh, shooting range called Shooter's World and it's accessible by golf cart here uh, to us. Mm -hmm. And another one just off Highway 44. If you're talking about skeet shooting or things like that, I'm, I'm not aware yeah. down here. But if you're talking about an indoor range where you can practice your marksmanship, Shooter's World. And again, uh, I don't know the name of the other one, but it's, not, it's a couple of miles from here on Highway 44. Bill asked us, are there are motion activated security lights allowed on your exterior of your house? Yes, they are allowed, and some of our neighbors have them. I think you have to be very sensitive to where your lights are pointed because many people have plantation shutters and, and blinds on their windows, and lights can come through, especially lights directed at an angle. And uh, if those come on at 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., they can be disruptive to your neighbors. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, motion sensor lights are allowed. Mm -hmm. Craig asked us, is May truly the worst month for love bugs? And what precautions do you make on an average golf cart ride? I think it's more based on temperature than, than month. Most of the love bugs don't carry a calendar. But you know what I did notice last year? It's a joke. Oh, <laughs> but I think they do have a calendar. No, they go by the temperature and the length of the days and that kind of thing. I mean, I know, that, I know they don't have a calendar, but they're here in May and in September. They got their little calendar. They overlap somewhat with other months. And uh, yeah. I would say you're right. May would be probably the peak yeah. of the lug bugs. And precautions? No precautions. Just <laughs> shut your mouth when you're riding a golf cart. <laughs> <laughs> Some people, honestly, though, do put a screen. In the summer, you'll want to flip down your window. Front window. Those of you lucky enough to have a window that will flip down. And they, some, some people here have taken it upon themselves to manufacture screens that fit in your open window so the bugs won't fly in while you're driving. Right. Of course, they can come right around the corner, but, <laughs> yeah. uh, and they do. But it's still, when you're, when you're traveling at 15 or 20 miles an hour, you know, you don't want a, a bug okay. in the face. Yeah. Now, the next question he asks is, um, is there a limit on the number of guest passes you can get through the villages in a month? That is a good question. Mm -hmm. A question so good that I had to go call the rec center and ask for the answer. And the answer was surprising to me. Okay. There is a limit of eight guest passes active at any one time. So for example, you could have five people the first part of the month and five people at the end of the month, but you couldn't have nine people at the first of the month, no. eight at a time. But they said they will work with you if you have something like a family reunion or a wedding or a, a huge party, they'll work with you on oh. that. So there are exceptions and uh, good, good question, That's Craig. A great Thank question. you. Susan asked us, is how easy it, is it to obtain a Florida's driver's license and to register your car? It was not difficult. Um, you have X number of days, I don't know what it is, to register your car once you become a, a resident of the state. And that's a big deal because it, uh, you know, that's proof that you are a resident and you would then be part of a state that is income tax free. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty easy. Uh, as far as the vehicle though, to register your car, that hurt. Yeah, the did. first time, I'm gonna throw a ballpark figure out of $400 fee to register each vehicle. Mm -hmm. 
but that's that's the main of it. That's the brunt of it. Actually, after that, it's quite a bit cheaper here to register your car than it was back in Indiana. In a nutshell, not difficult for the license, not difficult for the registration. Just bring your checkbook. This is from Susan. She asked, are there yard sales or garage sales in the villages? The sun's coming out. <laughs> We're looking a little harsh on camera there. We're going to get this over with. Yeah. Yes, there are yard sales and um, garage sales, uh, mostly in the spring. And you'll see little signs just like on a corner pointing. But uh, not too many signs are, they don't want us to put signs out. But uh, there is a way that people do it for maybe for that day uh, and then pick them up. But yes, there's quite a few yard sales. And it's good to see that sign, although it's not good for photography sometimes. But it's going to be a high of, what, 78 degrees today? Uh, seven, yeah, around there. Very, very nice day here. I feel like going swimming. One of our viewers asked, is it hard to get, uh, meet people during this COVID time? Um, how do you get around to do the meetings and clubs? Well, there are clubs that are still meeting. And just so happens that today during the newspaper, they show what's happening in the in the villages, in the clubs. And I'm going to show a list a few of them that some of them surprised me that they have three th over 3,000 clubs and you can just do about anything you want to do. But listen to the names of some of these clubs and the happenings around the villages. But before that, did you all see her smack me? <laughs> He's bouncing. Did you see that? He's got a nervous leg, so I went like this because he bounces and I'm like this. Woo -woo. <laughs> uh, you know, he was the kind of guy at church that when you look down the pew, everybody's, everybody's going head's like that. Everybody's head's bobbing. Anyway, go ahead, okay, so I'm sorry. I'm going to have to put my glasses on for this one. smacking me. Because I'm going to read. Okay. This one's called The Artist Jumpstart. Um, I'm not sure what they do on that one. Uh, Artist Club. Here's one for um, the Camaro Club. Want a Ballroom Dance Club. A Civil Discourse uh, North, I guess. Uh, I don't know what that's about. Should have pre-read that one, shouldn't you? <laughs> yes. Villages Golf Club. Would you like to join me for a meeting of the Civil Discourse Club? <laughs> <laughs> People living with autoimmune disease, um, a classic rock, a workout, uh, a DeLuna social club, a men's Christian Bible study, a retired police and fire association club, a running club, a table tennis club, civil war study club, poker lovers club, uh, a computer club. Um, here's polka. One. Yeah. Polka, it's a dance. Yeah. What'd you okay. think? I didn't know if you said pokem club or po <laughs> poket club or <laughs> polka dancing. <laughs> Here's one: a Cavalier King's Charles Spaniards Dog Club and a Villages Musical Theater Club. So that's just a list of two pages. Uh, every day there's a club. Is notes. there an I saw Sasquatch Club? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> there are clubs for everything. Yes, there are. <laughs> yeah. Until next time. See you when you get here.